Welcome back to the Dan Quarter Show. Thank you so much again to our wonderful band, the Kapano Jazz Collective. South Africa is a movie, and this is The Watch Party. Let's get into it. And we end off our show tonight with an interview that I've been looking forward to for a very, very long time. Because I think that we all know that one of the biggest crises in South Africa is crime. I think that we all feel generally unsafe in our streets no matter where we live. And I think we all have this kind of foreboding sense that the police are not winning the fight against crime. The police are not, like, like they don't have a handle on it. Like, the streets have been lost and they need to win it back. And we've seen in the last few weeks and months since uh, the new administration, the government of national unity, we have seen the new police minister and we've seen particular uh, local ministers or at least local leaders of policing in different parts of the country make a big song and dance of being tough on crime. There have been shootouts between police and suspects where many suspects have died. There was another one in Gauteng this weekend. There were a bunch of them in case it in. And so we have this sense now as a country that the new administration is trying to be tough on crime. But I just want to talk to an expert because, you know, when the politicians start talking, they're going to sell you the story that makes them look best. So I'm thrilled to welcome our key expert interview for this episode of the show. The expert, crime, a crime expert, not an expert on committing crimes, but knowing about crimes from the Institute of Security Studies. Lizette Lancaster is here. <laughs> You, you have a lot of fans. This is fantastic. I Thank know, you. Did you know you've got... Uh... We'd never get this in front of Parliament. <laughs> <laughs> so, Lizette, you are here as somebody who really knows how crime works in this country. I want to start with that initial question. What is the state of the crime-infested nation right now in South Africa? How safe are we? Are the police functional? Are they winning? What are the movements, or at least the momentum, between the crime wave and the policing wave trying to stop it? Yes, and there's never an easy answer to this question because we know from our communities and so on that crime is extremely complex. Sometimes we fear our neighbours, you know, so, so it's something very emotional to us all. But what we try and do is take the facts and try and unpack it into what should be the policy. So what we do know is from the reported crime statistics, we are sitting with about 70 murders on average a day in this country. During festive seasons, it increases to about 82 murders a day on average. That was December, as well as March's figures. Wow. So we are sitting with a pandemic, not very different to COVID. And it's one that affects all of us, directly or indirectly. I'm saying this, you know, as if, you know, it's just something I say, but it's something we feel daily. I understand that we're a very uh, angry country and a very traumatized and a very fearful country. I, I often talk with people about how what South Africa as a nation needs is for everybody to have a therapist yes. for like a good five to 10 years and maybe a psychiatrist also because we are such a traumatized country. I want to ask in terms of battling organized crime, mm. gangs and the rest, who's winning between organized crime and the police right now? And I know it's not an easy answer, but I'm trying to get a sense of the lay of the land. So when we look at crimes that are typically perpetrated by organized crime or groups, we see extortion. We know the minister and government has said how it has proliferated in all communities now. It's not just in certain hotspot metros like Durban or Joburg and, and, and Cape Town, we are seeing it even in rural areas in Limpopo and Pumalanga. Yeah, it's crazy. There was a story in Pabeja about uh, a family having to pay protection money to have a funeral yeah. for one of their now past family members. Exactly. We are seeing in Mtata schools being terrorized by extortion groups. So, so that's a form of organized crime. It might not be um, transnational organized crime, but it's organized crime. We are seeing um, almost 300% increase in kidnappings in the past uh, 12 years. Now, that is a form of organized crime. Um, and many of those are not transnational organized crime groups. They are often local ones, as you point out. What we all fear the most are those robberies, those kidnappings that happen when we are driving somewhere or we are walking somewhere, when we have wages or for our cell phone and so on. We know that it's very... Um, the. the the taking of people for, for express kidnappings, as we call it, for their banking apps to get access to your bank cards and your banking apps are real. And, and there seems to be very little done to deal with this. 
So organised crime in itself has been growing for the past decade especially, especially since 2017, but they really got very strong during COVID lockdowns huh. because the police were focused other, uh, you know, in other places. Yeah surfers, um, people exercising. <laughs> Go back you know, inside. <laughs> those having a little party of three wow. drinking. Wow. So what it has led to is that there's been this, this banning of cigarettes, this banning of alcohol has led to a network that established even in suburbs. And we have seen that these groups have expanded their ranges. It's all about territory, right? So if it's whether it's extortion, whether it's drugs, whether it is kidnapping. I mean, all these things are actually linked. Mm. It's about these groups now being everywhere. So, firstly, is, I know they'll never say this, but is our current uh, policing regime now just wink, wink, nudge, nudge, more willing to end up in shootouts with suspects to try and perform? Because you look, they're like, the police minister is a politician who's performing for the country so that he can look good. But also there's that kind of idea that if you are visibly really tough on crime and you make criminals understand that it is dangerous to mess around with us, then it'll intimidate other criminals or at least make them not have so much audacity. Like, do you think that that is happening and does that work? We are seeing, seeing huge successes of like some of the task teams, the kidnapping task teams, some of the anti-gang units and so on. So we are seeing pockets of excellence in the police. But these shootings that we are seeing is nothing new. We have been seeing around an, uh, uh, the average of around 400 people killed in shootouts since about 2012. So it's not new. Most of these have disproportionately always occurred in places like KwaZulu Natal. But we are seeing more publicity around it. We are seeing, I think, more focus on dealing with gangs. And we are seeing what seems to be more crime intelligence coming forward. But therein lies the danger, right? Because crime intelligence has been, and, and many reports have said this, um, open to corruption. There's a danger that crime intelligence, if it is corrupted, may be using police task teams to take out enemies of people rather than enemies of the law. You have said it. And that is what we must be so careful of. We know what amazing job some of these police members do. Um, we are their biggest fans. General Mkunazi is, for instance, in KwaZulu Natal, has got huge experience, training, leadership qualities, and he clearly knows what he is doing. But we must just be guarded that the low trust of 27% in the police that was recorded in 2021, that that is not further impacted by the fact that these killings can get out of control. So, Lizette, my, my final question then is, what should the police be doing more of or less of in the next five years of this administration to try and wrest back more control from organised crime that you've described as being super-powered, super saiyaned since the COVID lockdown? What, what do we need to do from a policy perspective? So, first of all, we can do stuff. You know, we halved our murder rate by 2010 by the World Cup. And we had policy environment that showed that we were reducing robberies in Gauteng. So a lot of good things happen. We saw Alice Park cleaner than uh, surrounding areas, cleaner than ever two weeks ago during the Springbok game. So we know it can be done. It has been done before, but it needs um, a policy directive by the new minister and oversight by the new minister and then operation control by the leadership. And that leadership needs to be there on merit they need to be elected just like all the law enforcement agencies in a transparent process. Their capabilities need to be matched with ranks. And very importantly, we need to make sure that crime intelligence has the overall, and I know they're busy with it, but without that, we are, we are at risk for more corruption. But it's a slow ship, you know, it's a big ship, that. So, but we need the political will to do it. And I think we are starting to see that. Mm. So, fingers crossed. Yeah, there's a lot of heavy information, but I genuinely do feel better for knowing it. Thank you so much. Lizette Lancaster, everybody. Thank you. <laughs>